What Will Be Here, Episode 1, Go for Deploy. Content warnings for this episode include swearing, the brief presence of fire, several animal noises, audio of a jet, and the recording of a gunshot. See the show notes for more details and a link to the transcript. Hello? Hello? Hi? Hi! Jules here! I'm working on a little time capsule project to send a message to the future, and these recordings are a part of it. This recorder, our payload, and there's a whole group of us working on it. We have a team of five, including myself. Everyone has a different specialty. I love seeing what they do. Being a part of this project is so exciting! Oh, hey! There's one of them right now. Armani! Armani, come here. Lovely listener, this is Armani. Say hi, Ari. I'm recording. Jules, that is not how you hold a mic. There is a handle. Hold it by the handle. I am. This is the handle. No, that is not it. Just give it here. I got it. There, that's better. Hello. And goodbye. Sorry, Jules, I got things to do. Rude. Anyway, Armani is our engineer. We went to the same college, and it's really nice to see a familiar face. We're here for different reasons, though. They're here because they love to tell stories. I'm here because it's a chance for a future for... Like... Someone. Anyone. Ari loves history. They say it's just all the stories of humanity piled up. I guess we're making history now, though. Right? For future people. Hopefully. Armani talks about their family a lot. There's a lot of love there, and I think it's hard for them to be apart. It's weird for me, because my family isn't... close. They don't even know I'm doing this. But I'm sure they'll understand. My folks work for Savannah, kind of like an eco-organization. Ah! Oh, shit. Oh. oh, hi there. Oh, what the fuck, Kay? Dane, language! Why? Were you in the vents? Are you trying to get killed when they collapse under your weight? I was doing repair work. Oh, repair work? Repair work? On what? The hole I made in the vents earlier? Oh, for fuck's sake, Kay. Dane! You're not my mother's. It's good to be polite. Come on, say hi like you mean it. (sighs) Hello, motherfuckers. Why do I even try? Wait, wait. You're recording? Don't mention I fell out of the ceiling. Will we even have a ceiling left when you're done? Will we even have a ceiling? (laughs) Of course we'll have a ceiling. (laughs) All right, Kay. (laughs) Sheesh. Let's make sure you didn't break anything. Do you need my help? I've got him. I'm fine. I'm fine to continue... uh, Whatever this is. Why are you carrying the mic around anyway? I'm doing introductions. Weren't we going to record our own bits? Or no? Our money's gonna lose their mind if they see you carrying the mic like that. It's fine. I already ran into them. And? They still have their mind, I promise. Okay... Well, that's one way to make an entrance. Um, so that was Dane, who is our physicist, and Kay, our mechanic. Don't let their straight-laced fashion sense fool you. Kay is a troublemaker. I can't believe they were in the vents in an Oxford shirt with a perfectly pressed collar. Kinda sums him up, actually. And Dane... Dane is, uh... Dane is nice. He's smarter than most people give him credit for, but he hides it by cursing like a sailor as you probably noticed. It's a terrible habit. On the plus side, though, he's actually... pretty handsome. (coughs) I mean, handy. (coughs) He's uh, handy to have around because he's a valuable member of the team. He's our physicist, so a lot of the schematics and such depend on him, and so, uh, yeah. Last stop, so to speak, the final member of the team is Shuri. She's our supply guy. Any and all equipment comes from her, by some, frankly, mysterious means that I'm just never going to ask about. 
What? I'm doing a meet the team bit so everyone knows who we are. Ironic coming from you. I don't know what you mean. I guess it's not a shock that you want to record everything we say and do. Just like Savannah. Come on, Savannah isn't that bad. Do you believe everything your parents tell you? My parents have nothing to do with- I'm really busy setting everything else up, so- You know what? Fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll get out of your hair. Hey. Jules. Leave the mic, and I'll introduce myself. All right. Here you go. Okay. You'll have to forgive me for the shift in tone. I can't stand her bubblegum and rainbows. Especially not when I'm the one member of this squad busting my ass outside of this vaguely protective bubble. Seriously, everyone else gets to spend the afternoon breathing filtered air, and I have to trust a retrofitted respirator to keep my lungs alive just so I can barter for scrap metal. Being cheerful? It's too fucking much. Don't get me wrong, people of the future. It's what I'm good at, and I'm proud of that. I mean, there'd be no rocket to send into space without the scrap metal, so it's not like you have to be a rocket scientist to... build a rocket. Uh, never mind. Dane practically begged me to help with this as soon as he joined the team, and that's like the whole point of being siblings, isn't it? We've always been pretty close, but... But I just cannot believe that in addition to sourcing materials, Jules has decided that I will also tell my life story to people who may or may not ever exist, and who, if they do, might not be human. You want aliens to learn about what humanity used to be from my stories? Really? Well, at least they're a lot more realistic than anything Savannah publishes. I don't fit into the Savannah mold in more than one way. I'd rather stay under their radar. So I, to put it lightly, am not a fan of someone with Savannah connections asking me to compromise myself. I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt and assuming she just doesn't know any better, but jeez. I know that in theory, we're all taking the same risk. We're not exactly supposed to be building a rocket in a secret underground lair. But damn it, if anyone's gonna get caught here, it's definitely gonna be me! Probably carrying mysteriously unbranded Savannah-like wire. Or setting up an exchange for aluminum and suddenly I'm in the back of an unmarked vehicle that was actually an undercover Savannah cruiser because my contact didn't bother to check if he was being tailed. I'm more than glad to help Dan and his friends, but I hate that someone who thinks that Savannah isn't that bad expects me to share a lot of details. But, since I've got this recorder, I might as well share something. I've actually started thinking about it all from a different angle. I mean, everyone besides Dane and me sees all of this on a sort of metaphysical level or something. I'm trying to get there with them, you know? So I'm treating this entire scheme as a really complex art project. And at the moment... I'm gathering up the art supplies. And even though I'm not the one with the grand vision, I'm trying to trust that it'll be something great in the end. Creative types have to believe that, or else we wouldn't finish anything, you know? That's how creating something always works. Like, the end product is still a long ways away, but you just have to convince yourself that it is going to be beautiful. And worth it. It's gotta be worth it. But for the time being, I'm still not so sure about putting my signature on this particular piece. So, sorry aliens, or whoever this reaches. My name is Shuri, and I'm the parts guy. And that's pretty much all I'm willing to tell this machine about me for now. Okay, now that someone with proper mic handling technique is here, let me tell you what you're about to listen to. It's a welcome message, of sorts. A hello that we'll send out across the universe. 
It'll include sounds, pictures and recordings from us, from all of us, detailing life here, in the hopes that... <sighs> I don't know. In the hopes that someone out there will find this and know what was here, after we're all gone. With this, they'll know the actual account of what's happening here on Earth, in contrast to the messages that have undoubtedly been sent out already. I've included a few of my favourite sounds, plus a few that I think are important for posterity's sake. There's the sound of wind and rain, crickets and frogs, the sounds of traffic and tools, of Mama making halva while Dad brews tea, thunder and gunfire, my brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, laughing and playing in the sun. The sound of drones flying overhead. My own heartbeat. Music, as much as I could get my hands on. I've also included the sounds of dogs, cats, rats, as many animals as I could find. Dad found me an old recording of a goat. It sounds a lot cuter than I expected, I gotta say. Some sounds were harder than others to get a hold of. Whales and horses. Volcanoes. The sound of an F-22 taking off. A Saturn V launch. Lift off on Apollo 11. Birds. If we've got the room, I'm going to be including some holograms. Old pictures of what was here. Pictures of the underground and the city stacked atop it. A half dozen types of flowers and trees. The sun in all its glory. I debated adding a few pictures of Savannah and Ocelot buildings, but... I don't know. I don't think they deserve to be remembered after all this. I'd like to, if I can get everyone to stand still long enough, include a picture of us. This little ragtag group of delinquents. Might be nice. To be remembered. Every culture's got their own way of remembering. Oral histories. Written accounts. Art, architecture, music, dance. We've got this rocket. And this message. I'll be translating it into as many languages as I know. I have a few other friends who can help me fill in the gaps. It took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to say for this. Some 200-ish years ago, NASA, God rest their souls, did something similar. They attached a phonograph, a physical record, to a spacecraft and launched it into the universe. Apparently, the people who were tasked with recording these greetings the first time around weren't really given any more information, just that it had to be a greeting to possible extraterrestrial life, and it had to be brief. The way that each community took it upon themselves to greet these life forms is fascinating. The Arabic greeting was, greeting to our friends in the stars. We wish that we will meet you someday. Whereas the people from Fujian, a Chinese province, said, Friends of space, how are you all? Have you eaten yet? Come visit us if you have time. The Japanese just wrote, Hello, how are you? While the Hittites, who are from present-day Turkey, simply said, Hail. Nepal said, Wishing you a peaceful future from the Earthlings. Sweden, I think, is one of my favourite responses. They wrote, Greetings from a computer programmer and the little university town of Ithaca on the planet Earth. Each message says so much within so little and I want this message to be perfect. A perfect representation of who we are as a people and the history that has shaped us into what we are today. So, what do we say? What should this little ragtag group of delinquents, hobbling together a rocket ship in a not-so-secret underground bunker, say to the world outside our own? What can we say to them to not only communicate that we are likely no longer, but that we want to be remembered for the good in our world once we're gone? 
after a few weeks of obsessing about this, I think I finally landed on a message that works. Please remember us, not for what was here, but for what will be. Peace, love, family, now and forever. What the hell is this? This isn't a mag drill, is it? Oh! I have to say something. <laughs> Jules is gonna throw a fit if I just leave the reporter in here for six hours after she explicitly said, Hey Kay, could you record something for the rocket? It's not like I'm gonna get kicked off the team for not recording something on day one. I can do it when I get to a break, it's fine. All right, all right, Jules. I will record the message for you as soon as I finish these rivets. Hey, did you say something? Shh. I'm not supposed to be in the ducks. Don't tell Jules I'm disobeying a direct order from our de facto commander. And Jules, when you eventually listen to this, because I know you're gonna do a last-minute check right before we launch, you're gonna thank me for being in the ducks all the time. Start countdown for apology at T minus two hours. Okay. We're all good, Jules. Where was I? Right. The last great hurrah before we get cut off from communicating with you ever again. Well, my name is Kay, and I'm going to tell you about our funny little species while I eat lunch. Speaking of which, <laughs> it is my pleasure to introduce you to the greatest culinary cooked up humankind has ever created. The hot steel vent. Well, no need for that canister anymore. No use having a torch attachment on your wrist gear if the fuel canister is empty. So how the hell did we get here? Better question is, where the hell are we gonna go in the next century? Because that is going to be one wild ride. They're claiming that in the next 10 years, they'll be able to give us handheld 3D printers with industrial capabilities. <laughs> just imagine printing an I-beam out of a spool of wire when just a few hundred years ago you had to cut down an entire tree and wedge it in there. <laughs> Who came up with such a ridiculous idea? Oh, 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 hot, 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 spicy sandwich. Ooh, let the sandwich cool off, Kay. You can't just eat it right off the cooktop. Ooh. Uh, so, where was I? Ah, humanity. Heroic and miserable inhabitants of the planet Earth and inventors of the miraculous device known as the motor. Also known for some stupid stuff like the invention of fascism, gelatin-packed meats, psychoanalysis, and the now non-existent Ohio. So, how did we survive into our modern, futuristic world? <laughs> Listen, I'm genuinely not sure. Mm. Mm. Rumor has it that guilt has something to do with it, but if I'm being perfectly honest, I think it's spite that has been a much bigger motivator for us. Speaking of which, hmm, did you know that certain persons in this little group are profoundly annoyed by me using an angle grinder in a suit? <laughs> hmm, I really don't care. I specifically got a fire-resistant fabric blend so my work clothes weren't so obviously work clothes, but hmm, apparently it's dangerous and going to profoundly screw something up. Seriously, you would think that the person who has been working with mechanical stuff since they were four would be better qualified to be the judge of tool usage than a physicist or a chemist? Could I make that repair with a smaller tool? Yes, but that wouldn't be as much fun as using an angle grinder. And besides, it matches my tie. So, that's really all you need to know about humans. If you tell us we aren't allowed to do something, that's the very first thing we're going to do. Well, Jules started this, so I assume you've already heard about who we are and what we're doing. Yes, great, wonderful. But I'm pretty sure she left out a lot of the background. The Earth is fucked. It's broken, and it's awful, and it's 
tearing itself apart. And there's nothing any of us can do to stop it. <sighs> Where do I even start? Where did it even start? I guess Savannah's the answer to that. Companies combined and merged until there were only a few of them. Pomegranate, Andatra, Crim X, Ocelot, and Savannah. And then Savannah devoured the others until they owned, well, everything. These days, you can drive your Savannah brand car to your Savannah-owned apartment and make that dinner you bought at the Savannah-run grocery store in your Savannah-made specialty oven. <laughs> uh, our lives are run by a fucking corporate monolith owned by the world's most powerful piece of shit. You can bicker over brand names all you want, but you only get the illusion of choice. Boulder Pop versus Funzo comes down to a difference of can color. The soda is made in the same factory. Savannah Soda, or whatever their marketing think tanks decided to call it. So, Dana? Fuck if I know. Savannah makes the shitty off-brand goods, the luxury name brand goods, <laughs> and all the shit in between. I came out of college with a shiny degree and a lot of determination, but even the best little startup couldn't compete. We either got crushed or, well, absorbed. So, I either had to work under gout no core or not work at all. And the choice was pretty damn clear. I did the nonprofit thing. Worked as an organizer. Tried to get the powerful people to care about the consequences of their actions. It's not physics, but I was fucking good at it. But that didn't matter. The game was rigged against us. <laughs> and by us, I mean humanity. Fuck, I think we weren't even players in this metaphor. The real players, like Gout? <laughs> Actually, mostly Gout. I hate that son of a bitch. Get away with things so much worse than murder. He can pollute entire rivers with his factories and burn cities to the ground with his weapon tests. And cause goddamn earthquakes with his strip mining. He may not have personally caused last season's hurricanes, but he sure made a profit off of it. <laughs> I have the financial records to prove it, but Savannah owns the news. <laughs> the thing is, though, I think they know about the consequences. Savannah knows the numbers as well as I do. <laughs> They've done the fucking math. They just don't care. The world is dying because people just don't care. <sighs> I shouldn't say that. People do care. But the people with the power to change anything don't. And so we're here in this fucked up, crumbling world, just doing our best until we die. So many of us are dying. What's gonna be left when we're all dead and gone? What will fucking be here? I think it'll be ashes. <sighs> Jules, that better be good enough for you. This episode was written by Brad Colebrook, Chandler Harrison, Cole Burkhart, 
D. Reese, and Tal Manier, with script editing by Evan Tess Murray. It was directed and sound designed by Tal Manier, and features Jonah Loon as Jules, Kathy Youssef as Armani, Vico Ortiz as Kay, John Y. Kamara as Dane, and Sahar Iman as Shuri. The theme music is by Benny James, and the transcript is by Caroline Meeks. What Will Be Here is primarily produced in Long Beach, on the stolen land of the Quiche Nation. Discovery Roger, go for deploy.